Hi guys. All right. And we're back. Um, I, so it's Sunday, Sunday, the 6th of October, 2019. And I have a bunch of stuff I got to do on this video. <laughs> so I hope it doesn't get too terribly long. And I made some promises. So three promises. First promise is that I would draw for winners on the giveaway. Oh, I forgot to grab the thing. Hold on. Hold the phone. So I, oh gosh, I better not forget to take these out of my shop. <clears throat> okay, let me show you what I'm doing first. Okay, so I said I would, I was going to do four items as giveaways for my 5,000 subscriber milestone. Let me open my shop real quick so that I can be sure I don't, I'm, I swear, I don't think any of this stuff has sold this morning. <laughs> um, and if it has, then I'll just do something else, but <clears throat> pretty sure it hasn't. Haven't heard any cha-chings this morning. Well, I did sell a couple, uh, I did sell a couple, um, 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 um tab sets. <laughs> so thank you for that. All right. Listings. So this one I know for sure is not in my shop. So this is a little mini kit that a little mini book kit that I had in live sale that I did with Carla. And this is the only one that was left. So I thought I would gift this to someone and then, and I don't know if I really want to go through the whole thing, but it's just a bunch of, it's a bunch of papers, you know, like yummy papers, ephemera tags and tickets and that kind of stuff. A bundle of like, um, embroidered fabric and lace and, you know, yummies and then a bunch of buttons and little charms and stuff like that. And then this little mini book, this little miniature book that is on uh, poetry. They're little like poems. So there's that. And then I was going to do this journal. So this is, this was from, let me deactivate that. Um, this one was my most recent series of journals that I did. Okay, so this is uh, this is Clarice, and I thought I, I thought someone had asked me about that journal, but I don't remember now. I thought someone had, but I don't know. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Okay, so then this one is also listed in my shop. So let me deactivate that one. Okay, so this is just a six by nine, kind of like Midori style, but it's not, well, actually it's not Midori style because it's actually stitched in, but, um, so, you know, the use, you could go back and watch the video of the flip through on any of these if you want to, if you're one of the winners and, you know, you need help deciding what you want. Um, so this is. The July, I did these in July, so look for a video in July of the 6 by 9 file folder journals. And then this one is the um, the one that where I did the little, like, um, sort of like, uh, what's it called? Oh my god, I'm going to have a brain fart right this minute. Um, uh you know, where it has a little story anyways. So that one, <clears throat> and then this little, um, little golden book journal. So it's, it's the, um, it's so cute. It's got this little kid's name in the front and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, the book is pretty beat up, but it, I don't know. I just think it's really cute. And it's kind of like, uh, I did them sort of like a glue book sort of idea. So I didn't really do any pockets or anything in them. And they're just pages, you know. Um, and then I did a pack of 
goodies to go along with it. So you could, um, you know, put the stuff, put the stuff in the journal if you wanted to. It's just a bunch of tags and, you know, tickets and ephemera and little, you know, things like that. So, so those four items. Okay. So this, let me number these so that you guys know which is which. So what I want you to do, listen carefully. If I draw your name and I'm not taking any more names, I've gone through the video where I said to leave a comment telling me like what your favorite style of journal is and that kind of stuff. And so anybody who answered that question, I wrote your name down and put it on a little a little piece of cardstock, folded it up and put a paper clip on it. Okay. So everybody's is exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. So these are going to be lettered. A is the six by nine journal. B is the kit. Okay. C is the cookbook journal concept concept that's what it is concept journal and then d is going to be the little golden book um like glue book okay so what i want you to do if i draw your name is please tell me in order a b c and d which one you want okay and send me an email telling me all four, okay, in which order you would want. If you don't want any of them, then send me an email and say, you know, I think I'll pass. And then I will um, draw another name, okay, on my next video. So please email me before Tuesday at noon. Um, that is the 8th of October please email me before Tuesday at noon. That's Pacific Standard Time, 12 noon, not midnight. And tell me your choices, okay? And then I will send this to you. And even if you live in Zimbabwe, I will send it to you or wherever you live in the world, okay? For free, I'll send it to you. So, because that's how much I love you. <clears throat> All right, so let's draw the names. Let me put these back in their special box. It might take me a little bit to get them mailed, but I promise I will. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to draw four names. The first one is... Dun, 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 Diane Sample. Okay, Diane Sample. You are my first winner. Okay, send me an email before noon on Tuesday, October 8th, before 12 noon Pacific Standard Time. So if you live somewhere, you know, not in on the West Coast of the U.S., you have to look at it and see what time that is your time, because <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, okay, so number two, dun dun dun, dun is Tammy Frazier. Okay, Tammy, send me an email before noon on October 8th, Pacific Standard Time, noon Pacific Standard Time, and tell me your choices, A, B, C, or D, everybody, Tammy and Diane, A, B, C, D, tell me all four in what order you would want them, okay, so that I know. All right, and the first person to get me their email in, well, actually, no, I'll do it in this order. So Diane gets first choice, Tammy gets second choice, and so on and so forth, okay? So, number three is Daisy 4B, okay? <laughs> I don't know who that is, but that's a really cute name. Okay, so you got third choice, okay? So, you know, Diane, you're obviously going to get whatever one you want, but um, Tammy and Daisy, you probably, you know, you have to give me your choices in order, okay? All right, so one more. Dun, 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 dun. 
and drum roll please number four is raven patel okay so this is number four so when you send your email please tell me like who you are <laughs> like who your youtube name is because i don't know if this is your actual like real name in life i doubt if daisy's name that's really her real name um, Diane and Tammy and probably Raven, those are probably your real names. But please tell me your actual real name in case it's not. And maybe you're using an alias on YouTube. Um, and I need your address, most importantly, so that I can actually send this stuff to you. Okay. So this is, these are going back in here. This is going in with the journals and stuff so that I keep my, you know, what together. Okay. <sighs> All right, so I have some stuff I'm going to work on kind of while I'm, while I'm talking because I feel stupid just sitting here talking and not doing something. So I had some questions and also lovely Laura has tagged me in the 10 crafty questions challenge. So I have a whole bunch of questions I have to answer. So I hope you like the sound of my voice because you're going to hear it for a while. I mean, unless you decide to move on. But <clears throat> so while I'm answering all these questions, those questions plus other questions that people have asked in comments of previous videos, I'm going to answer those first and then I'll do the 10 crafty questions. Um, what I'm going to do just, you know, just because it's kind of mindless and I think I can do it while I'm talking is I'm going to do some stamping on these with those old letters, those old numbers and stuff that I have and some like postal, postal, post office stamps and stuff. And then I'm going to cut these up into tag shapes and we're just going to make them into tags. And um, I'm not going to do much else to them. I'm going to make them real simple because you know, excuse me, <clears throat> you know how you hiccup and burp at the same time. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. And I thought, you know, I'll just do that while I'm talking. Okay. So I have this box. Oh, and then I have these things. I lost them for a long time. I think they fell behind my desk, but these are those little things where you can use like a um, dauber and make lines on text. So, yeah, so I put those in with my stamps because I kind of thought it made sense. Anyway, so I'm going to just work on these individually. And I just want to add some numbers to these. And I'm just using archival black ink. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just very randomly. Whoops. See, I have to use this. I don't think that ink cut is good anymore. Hold the phone. Hold, please. I need a re... Well, I guess I don't really need a re-inker. So these stamps are not brand new, right? So it's going to be kind of a challenge. Oh, boy, they're not stamping very well. Hmm, maybe I need a juicier pad. I have this other... I think I'm going to try this. So this is an old stamp pad that I got at the thrift store and it didn't have any ink on it. And so I just put, yeah, I think this is going to work better. Yeah. I just put, um, oh my God, I put a ton of ink on there. Anyways, it's foam rubber. And so, yeah, look at that. I just uh, put a whole bunch of ink in there. I don't even remember what kind of ink it was. I'm going to grab a bigger, well, maybe I don't need to. Okay, I need to stop using number eight, though. Okay, so I'll quit, I'll quit jabbering. But, um, all right, so my first question is, oh, about the inker. Someone asked if I glue the pad onto the inker tool the this thing and yes i glue it on with hot glue and so then when i'm taking it off i just kind of set it down like this and i get my heat gun and i he just heat it on the edge right there and then i use a popsicle stick or something i actually have this little metal thing 
I don't even know where this came from. I think out of like a filing cabinet maybe. And, um, and then I just scrape it off as it, you know, you have to do it a couple times with the heat gun, but like this one probably didn't get glued perfectly, but yeah. So I glue them on. And then I, what I usually do is I tear it off a couple times and then just re-glue them. Um, and then after about the third time that I change it, I actually scrape all the glue off. But yeah, so that's what I do. And this ink is probably a combination of um, Distress Ink and something else. So I'm not sure that's what I want to use. Boy, this is riveting, huh, you guys? Let's try this ink pad. This is a memento. Yeah, you know, they don't have to be... It's because this thing is kind of wrinkly. I think I think this pad is going to work better. This one is just way too juicy. So I'm just going to use this. This is the Rich Cocoa Color Memento ink. Yeah, and then I don't have to worry about wiping every single one off either. Okay, so next question is, where do I find ephemera? <clears throat> so... I don't know. I mean, I find it all over the place. Um, thrift stores. I know that sounds crazy, but I look for it in thrift stores. Most thrift stores have a section of office supplies. And so that, so that's where I usually go. Um, I sort of stopped looking for books at thrift stores lately. I don't know. I just haven't really been finding much. So yeah. So <clears throat> I don't really find much in thrift stores because, well, I'm not really looking in thrift stores for that kind of stuff. And then I have some of these stamps too, which I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> these are just fun, you know? Um, yeah. So thrift stores, and where else do I find ephemera? Ephemera is hard to come by sometimes, you know, because if you think about it, what is ephemera? Ephemera is something that is ephemeral, right? It's like, it's temporary. That's what ephemera is. Ephemera is not the things we make necessarily to put in junk journals. That's not really what ephemera is. Ephemera is, if you look at the definition of it, it is, it is a representation of something that, that happened like a ball game, like a, a baseball game or, um, so like your ticket from the baseball game or a concert ticket or a stamp, a postage stamp, um, you know, a parking ticket or, you know, things that represent something else that was temporary. Okay, that's what ephemera is. Book pages are not really ephemera. Um, if you if you look at you know what what the the definition of ephemera really is, bingo cards. Um, you know, it's just something you use once and then its its purpose is exhausted or is is uh, is done, right? And so. I'm talking about the kind where you daub it, not the kind where you slide the little thing. So those kind of postcards, um, or yeah, postcards. That's another one that is is considered ephemera. Um, so yeah, so you don't, you can't, you can't really make ephemera. I mean, you can, you can make something that looks like ephemera, you know, but. <clears throat> but you're not actually making ephemera. Ephemera is something that just kind of comes into your life, you know, as you're living your life. You know, a lot of times when people are making, they're doing like smash books or um, even scrapbooking, a lot of the time what they're using in those as memories or memorabilia, okay, is ephemera. So anyways, where do I find ephemera? Mm, eBay. Sometimes I find stuff on eBay. 
I have purchased in the past. I have purchased, um, you know what? I don't think this needs any stamping. I have purchased boxes of ephemera. So you could go to estate sales. If you can find an estate sale where, you know, they have, you know, boxes or filing cabinets or things like that where the family hasn't taken everything out of it already. Sometimes you can find ephemera there. Photographs are, are ephemera, basically, you know, because they're, they're capturing a moment, right? So you would consider that ephemera. Um, yeah, so estate sales. What does this even say? Oh, my God. It's something in Spanish. Solo Pagadero Beneficiario <laughs> and La. I don't know. Okay, I'm not using that one anymore. Okay. <clears throat> My glasses are all fogged up. Okay, so where do I find it for? And, and eBay, you know, a lot of times you can find bundles on eBay. Um, you can buy it on Etsy. People offer you know, junk journal bundles on Etsy and um, tickets, tags, you know, so those little like uh, repair tags and things like that, that, you know, I think I've had them for sale before because I bought like a whole case of them or something and I never even really use them. But, um, so anyway, yeah, so, so that, um, Pages from like a phone book would be considered ephemera because a phone book is temporary. It changes. Um, yeah, so it's just, you know, you just got to keep your eyes out. You just got to keep your eyes open. And people sell ephemera a lot. You know, lots of people. Oh, you know what? This thing is great. Okay, I think I can use this really juicy pad for this. This thing is cool. Hold on. I'm going to try it without the pad under it. Yeah, see it does that line. That squiggly line. There we go. Let me do a couple more. Um, this is the thing they used to use to cancel stamps. And it actually has a pad right there. That I guess I could probably ink that. But anyways. Um... Yeah, this is, this is good for this. Yeah, so, so you know, it is hard to find for sure. And it's, um, and it's frustrating. So anyways, I just happen to have a whole bunch of ephemera in case you want some. <laughs> just say it. Okay, magazines are ephemera. Advertising is ephemera. So old magazines. Definitely look for old magazines in thrift stores. And, you know, you can use those advertisements on all kinds of stuff. So this one, I'm just going to leave it. I like it. I like it just the way it is. And it's going to get cut up into pieces. I was thinking about maybe gluing some tickets and stuff on these. And, oh, maybe some, maybe some labels. Yeah, let's put some labels on one of these. Um, okay, <clears throat> let me grab the label box. Hold on, where's the label box? Oh, here it is. All right. Um, yeah, so what else? What's the next question? I hope that helps. I know that wasn't really a very great answer, but. Um, okay. And then someone asked if I've had formal training or if I'm self-taught. And the answer is both. I guess both. I've taken lots of art classes. And. Um, I've taken figure drawing classes. I've taken art, you know, uh, like color and design, I've taken sculpture classes, photography classes. Um, you know, I have taken some art classes and at one point I thought, you know, I wanted to kind of do that for a living. I did, I did, uh, study photography for about two years in college, did a lot of ceramics lots of pottery. I wanted to be a ceramicist for, for quite a while there. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I do have some understanding of, you know, the elements of art and design and of color theory and that kind of stuff. And, um, <clears throat> And, you know, that kind of stuff is, it, it, it is helpful, especially when, you know, you're doing something like this, where, you know, you've had, maybe, maybe you feel like you need practice. Um, you know, look at some, look at some, some books on color theory and on composition, mostly composition, because then you learn about things like pattern and texture and rhythm and, you know, the, the way that, the way that your eye moves throughout a piece, you, you, there's theories about that. And they're, they've done lots of studies about the way that people look at things, like where your eye goes and you create these lines, even if they're not actual lines, like, like if you look at a painting, sometimes somebody, the direction that someone is looking in a painting actually creates a line and it makes you look that direction, right? So there's ways that you can get a viewer to kind of move throughout a piece the way you want them to by creating direction in your work, you know? Anyways, and it's interesting, I took lots and lots of art history classes, and one of the cool things about doing that, and if you get a chance, you know, you can look at all kinds of videos online, on just on YouTube for free, um, talking about uh, artists and critiquing art, and, you know, on specific artists or, or on art movements, you know, things like that, and it's amazing what you pick up from that like <clears throat> you start to see in a totally different way and i feel like um art appreciation comes from understanding what it was that that artist was trying to, to do you know and then you learn to kind of appreciate it more you know like like if you don't you can't if you know most people would look at a coffee cup covered in fur um, and a spoon covered in fur as ridiculous, right? Until you realize or until you learn what it was that that artist was trying to express. There was something that that artist was trying to say and um, there was a message there, you know, and you have to look at the history and the time frame in which that work was created and the movement politically, economically, socially that were happening at the time that that artwork was created. So, you know, looking at art isn't just looking at pictures of things or objects like sculpture or whatever. It's actually learning about history and what was happening in the world in all of those different, um, you know, ways and, you know, socially, politically, what all of that stuff, culturally, religiously, you know. So you do start to kind of learn about that stuff too, just by learning about art. And I just think that's really interesting. And the same goes for music, definitely for music. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I recommend very strongly just sort of trying to gain some um, just in your, in your spare time, um, Try to, try to broaden your horizons about art and maybe pick up a book on art appreciation and read it and like try to get some understanding of, um, of how to look at a piece of art because I think it really helps your own work. You know, if you can appreciate someone else's work and understand why you like it or why you don't like it, because it honestly, like, when you, you have a greater understanding of art and art history and stuff, like <clears throat> you really never find anything you don't like. You only find meaning in it, you know, and you could say, well, it doesn't really speak to me. It doesn't really resonate with me personally or whatever, my own personal life, but, <clears throat> but I can appreciate what the artist was trying to say there, you know? So anyways, 
So yeah, so the answer is yes and no. But I have always been very um, tenacious when it comes to uh, when I have an idea about something I want to do. I've always been very tenacious about it. And like, you know, I got to figure out a way to get that done. And um, so I've always want, I've always been real into, well, I'll talk about that stuff later, but anyways. Um, oh yeah. And then someone asked, what did we do before bras? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I don't understand why we have to wear bras, but um, sometimes I'm glad that we do, you know, but Sometimes I think some men should wear bras, just saying. There's certain men that I see occasionally, sometimes at Walmart, that should be wearing a bra. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> but on a, on a deeper level, I feel like if men should be allowed to go topless, then I feel like women should be allowed to go topless too, okay? And I'm not saying that I'm going to start walking around without a shirt on, but I feel like I should have the right to do that if that's what I want to do. As, as long as men are allowed to do that, I feel like I should be allowed to do that. Um, I should say us as people, all of us collectively should be allowed to do that. Okay. Trying to be <clears throat> politically correct. So, yeah. So anyways, I don't know what we did before bras. Um, and as someone asked what the noise in the background was on one of my previous videos, and they heard, probably heard Momo whining. And I just want to talk to you guys about Momo for a second. First of all, Momo is my dog. Momo is a 15 year old Chihuahua and Momo has been very, very, very spoiled most of her life. Okay. Meaning that I carry her around. I mean, I don't so much anymore. Okay. And I feel super guilty about it, but there's reasons that I don't. <clears throat> First of all, Momo throws up a lot. Okay. Momo has issues with halitosis. Okay. Her breath is terrible. I have paid upwards of $400 numerous times. To have Momo's teeth cleaned. She weighs three and a half pounds, you guys. She's tiny. There's no way I can get a toothbrush in her mouth. Believe me, I've tried. Because who wants to spend $400 to have their dog's teeth cleaned, right? So I'm justifying, okay? But the thing is, is that she's sick. I mean, she's not sick, sick. She's just old. It's like she's throwing up. Nobody has any explanation why. But she just like spontaneously just pukes and I don't really feel like getting puked on. So I don't carry her around like I used to. I let her loose in the room in here in my studio as often as I can. I try to do it when I know she hasn't recently eaten so that she's not puking on the floor. And when she's not and I can't be watching her or she's not outside, which I put her outside every day, especially when it's warm enough. I put her outside every day for a couple of hours. She loves going out there. She just whoops, she sits in the sun and you know, she's, she's happy to be outside. So she spends a lot of time outside and when she's in the house, a lot of the time she's in her kennel. Okay. Her kennel is generally her safe space. And it's a place where she chooses to go most of the time. Okay. Most of the time she likes to be in there. She does not like it when I lock the door. And when I tell you that it's her kennel, I'm talking about a gigantic kennel. It's like the size of the underneath of my dining room table. It's huge for a three pound dog. Okay, like she has a bed in there. She has a little potty space. She has a little eating space. She has a little play area. Like it's big. It's not like I'm, you know, I don't know. She's not in prison. And just because Momo whines does not mean that I'm just going to like go get her and train her to, to do that. You know, it's something that she started doing 
after I went on a trip to go down to Oregon and I went to my son's wedding, when I came back, that's what she was doing. So I don't understand it and I don't know why, but I feel like the person that had been taking care of her left her in the kennel the entire time I was gone, which was like four days. So I'm trying to train her to stop doing that. Anyway, so that's who I was yelling at the other day. And just because she's old and she's whining doesn't mean that she can't, you know, be where I put her. You know, she is a dog. Okay, just saying. Anyway, so that's my thing about Momo. And, um, you know, everybody has their own choices about the way that they take care of their animals and stuff. You know, some people feel like dogs are their children. And, you know, I don't necessarily feel that way. I feel like she's my dog and she kind of gets treated like a dog. But anyways, so then um, somebody also said that they didn't think that they could do these journal covers because I like that, how that turned out with the, see, I just kind of stamped on the labels a little bit. Anyways, sorry if I get like defensive about the dog thing, but I kind of do because it's kind of ridiculous. But anyways, um, and one of these days I'm going to tell you that I've had Momo put to sleep because as soon as Momo gets to the point where I feel like she's in pain or, um, she's throwing up so much that it's uncontrollable, or if I ever see any blood or anything like that, I'm going to have her put to sleep because I, I just feel like that's the humane thing to do. And God knows, like if, if I got to that point, and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. I'd want to be put out of my misery. So anyways. Um, so somebody said that they didn't think they could do these covers because they didn't have a sewing machine. Well, you know what? The covers, as far as the stitching that I did on the spines of the covers, um, it's really just decorative. It's not actually holding anything together. Just just saying. So so you, you could. You, you definitely could do that. <clears throat> you could make these journals um, because those are not, it's not like structural, you know, and I do do a lot of stitching for sure. You know, um, you know, you can get a sewing machine pretty cheap, especially if you're just going to be sewing paper. Like you could get a sewing machine on Amazon for like 75 bucks, 80 bucks, maybe even cheaper, you know, if you want one, I'm just saying, um, Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sorry guys. I know I get, I get fired up about the dog thing, but you know, I've been a dog breeder in my life and that's, you know, it used to be a career for me. So I know what I'm doing and I know how to take care of her. So anyways, um, all right. So can I answer these questions? Thanks, Laura. <clears throat> what is my, okay. The first question is, so this is those 10 crafty questions challenge that um, has been sort of floating around on YouTube. So I got tagged. Anyway, so <clears throat> my name is Jessica Aaron Rapp. And that's Aaron with an A, A-H-R-E-N. And um, if you need my address, send me a private message. <laughs> If you want to send me money or something. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. And then how did I come up with my YouTube name? Well, my YouTube name is actually my name. Hi, Adrian. Hello. How'd it go? Yeah, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> oh, I'm an Air Force mom now. Woo -woo. Um, okay. How did I come up with my YouTube name? Well, my YouTube name is my name, but it's also like, um, for some reason on YouTube, you have to have a first and last name. It's kind of weird. So, <clears throat> so my first name is Jessica Rapp. My last name is two silver oranges. So that's my business name. It's like, uh, my started out just an Etsy shop. So that's why it's all one word kind of scrunched together. Cause that's the way they do it on Etsy. Anyway. So two silver oranges started out. Um, I was intending to do the shop with my daughter-in-law actually. And, um, for, you know, whatever reasons, um, she couldn't do it. And she decided that if she was going to do it, she was going to do her own shop. 
separately, which probably was the best thing anyway. And so, yeah, so that's uh, why it's two, two silver oranges, because it was going to be both of us. Turned out it's just one silver orange, but I can't really change it now. And so then silver oranges, my mom um, always wanted to have like a little shop, like a little gift shop or something. And she wanted to, um, she wanted it to be called the silver orange because she, um, because those are two words that really don't have anything that rhyme with them. And so that's why, yeah, that's why the, the silver oranges. So anyways, yeah, so she wanted to have a shop called that. And so I guess I kind of stole it from my mom, but she doesn't really care. Um, yeah. So, and the reason for that is because I feel like it, it, that means, you know, that also translates to something unusual or one of a kind, you know, nothing can really rhyme with it. And so we all want to have, you know, that, um, we want to be unusual anyway. So I like how these stamps are working out. They're pretty cool. And I'm just stamping them sort of on the, I could probably add some postage stamps to these and they would be cool. So this is going to be cool. as just tags cut up, you know, and kind of like smash the stamp kind of smush it around a little bit too anyway um so yeah so that's how i came up with that and then the third one is my favorite craft hmm really anything to do with paper um i've never really been into scrapbooking although i like a lot of the elements that come along with scrapbooking but um, I've always loved anything to do with paper. And like I've, I don't know, a long time ago, I talked about doing these like decoupage um, stars that I wanted to do with you guys. But I didn't do it because I decided that I really just want to keep this channel all about junk journaling, right? <clears throat> I didn't want to start bringing other things into it. And I felt like, um, oops, that didn't really work. I felt like, um, doing other crafts on here would be kind of contaminating this channel. So I decided not to do that on this channel, but, um, my favorite, yeah, my favorite crafts are really anything to do with paper and always has been, you know, I like origami and, um, you know, I, I really want to start making my own paper. That's something that I've done before, but I haven't really done a lot lately. And like, since I was probably a teenager and then I also really want to, um, I want to do some more marbling. I've done lots of marbling in the past and that's something that I really, really, really want to do more of again. So, but yeah, anything paper. Okay. <laughs> um, my favorite place to shop for craft supplies. Well, huh, that's hard. Probably Hobby Lobby is probably my favorite. If you, if you're saying like a store, you know, but I do also like the art supply store that's here in Spokane. It's called Spokane Art Supply. Um, I like I like that store. Um, they have cool paper in there. And um, online, you know, on Amazon, I, I find a lot of the kind of like everyday things that I need, you know, glue and, um, you know, tape and that kind of thing. But, um, but also Etsy. Etsy is, um, Etsy, I find a lot of, I find a lot of things that are just for me necessary, like not necessarily for my junk journals, but, um, but yeah, Etsy, 
My absolute number one favorite place to shop is going to have to be eBay, though. Um, yeah, eBay. I, I, I just, I just find so much stuff that I use all the time on eBay, you know, and if you would like to have some, you know, pointers about shopping on eBay, uh, leave a comment below. And, you know, if, if you guys are interested in, in doing that, maybe I would be happy to kind of talk about some strategies for shopping on eBay. If that's, you know, I mean, whatever I do, you know, um, because there are some things that you can do that kind of help you find what you're looking for a little bit more effectively than just, you know, running for running a search, you know, anyways. And then my top five crafty channels. Wow. Like way to put somebody on the spot, you know, it, it's just really hard to say. Um, I have my top um, inspiration listed in the description on all my videos. So those ladies are, um, are in the top five. Um, I really like, um, the rebookery. I really like Gina's channel. She does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, I love her style. I like what she does as far as how, how I like how dedicated she is to repurposing things, you know, really that's, that's what's cool about Gina and that she just really is all about that. And, um, but I have other channels that I like to watch that don't even have anything to do with junk journaling or journals or anything like that. Um, one of my favorites is the craftsman. Um, he just does like, he just does, um, really cool things in his workshop. Um, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. If I remember, if you guys want to just watch something different one day, um, he's, he's really fun to watch and he's, he's entertaining and he actually does do some stuff that really relates to what we do. Like he does a lot of, um, like transfers, like photo transfers and stuff. And, um, he does a lot with like resins and, um, soldering and he's real into like metal and stuff. So, yeah, so he's pretty cool. It's called the craftsman. No T, no T, the craftsman. But, um, yeah, so that guy, it's hard to say who my top five are. You guys, I watch, I watch everybody and I never comment on anybody's videos. I always give a thumbs up but I hardly ever comment. Um, you know, it's because I have this wireless keyboard, right. That's always not on my desk and it's just a real pain to comment. If someone asks for comments or asks a question or something kind of like what I did, then I will, I will make an effort to comment, but I don't, I don't comment that much. So anyways, um, Wendy's journal adventures. I really like watching her flip throughs and she has really great, like, um, just sort of quick how to's, you know, um, little tutorials and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So anyways, there's tons of people and we're doing a video hop in November that I'm just now starting to sort of co coordinate via, via YouTube or via, um, Facebook and, um, an email. Okay. So if you're inter interested in finding out more about that, I will be, um, updating on, um, on my Facebook group, what's going on with it <clears throat> in the next, you know, couple weeks and stuff. Actually, I'm gonna put a bigger one on there anyway. So that, yeah, let's move on from there. <laughs> My favorite color, my favorite color. Hmm. I don't honestly have a favorite color. I do love orange and I specifically love pink and orange together. Um, I don't really, I'm not really much into gray. Um, as far as like clothing, 
I used to only wear gray when I was in high school because I was like kind of like I don't know I think I was depressed or something <clears throat> but yeah yeah orange is probably my very favorite color and let's see what's the next question <laughs> my favorite tools uh baby wipes mm, scissors <laughs> scissors are my absolute favorite tool um what else my paper trimmer and my corner rounder and a lot of other tools i mean if so generally what i have near me are my favorite tools so i have like my circle punches my corner rounder my staplers my hole punches um that includes like this little one that does the slots um pliers i use a lot of pliers for different things tons of scissors i've got i mean i have tons of scissors my um this thing i use this a lot i use this when i'm uh, binding books but i also use it to like pry up staples and books and stuff and um yeah and that inking tool probably my inking tools i love these these guys so that's sort of what i have like at hands at arm's reach around me so um where did i get crafting love from my crafty love hmm, i think probably from from both of my parents um my mom was always into doing crafty stuff when i was little like you know she always um she did like like macrame and um she always was into sewing my mom made a lot of our clothes when i was a kid so yeah so she she really influenced me a lot as far as crafting and she was always pretty supportive of crafting too you know like she encouraged it when i was real little we live well not real super little but when I was like in my preteens, we lived in the country, like we lived out on a farm and we didn't have any electricity. We didn't have any running water in the house. We didn't have a toilet. We had an outhouse. Um, my mom cooked on a wood cook stove and that kind of thing. So I had to be kind of creative about, you know, oh God, I just totally smushed that into the wrong ink. Um, I had to be kind of creative about entertaining myself, you know, my brother and I used to love like playing on these old broken down cars that were out there on the farm. And, um, I was really a tomboy, very, very much of a tomboy growing up. And most of my friends were boys and even like into high school, I just, I never really got along with girls all that much. <laughs> So, yeah, but, and then also from my dad, my dad was an interior designer and, um, and I didn't, I wasn't necessarily raised, whoops, raised by my dad because him and my mom split up when I was just a baby. But I feel like genetically, I think I got a lot from him too, you know? Um, and then also just my ex-husband was an artist. And so I was always around him and he was constantly drawing constantly. And he was always very, very supportive of me, you know, buying art supplies and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Like, um, you know, we, we, we were both pretty, pretty creative. So, you know, sort of a culture in our, in our household with like my kids and stuff. And so, like, one of my sons, uh, Adrian, that just, just came in, um, you know, he's a interior, or not interior, he's a graphic designer, you know, and um, so it's just kind of in our family, I think. Just looking at string. I'm loving these, these tags, by the way. These are going to be super cool. Um, okay, next question. What is this tag? What is that stamp? 
What is this one? That's received. Insufficient address. Um, yeah, and when did I start crafting? I sort of just answered that. Like, when I was really, really little, I've always had a thing for paper. Um, used to drive my mom crazy because I would, I was constantly cutting paper up into little tiny pieces for one reason or another. Like I used to love when I was in grade school, um, I used to love it when the teachers would ask me and I always volunteered to like make copies, you know, to go to the office and make copies for them. That was like my favorite thing. And then if there was ever extra handouts, I always asked if I could have them, you know, like, can I have the extras? Like, do you have any papers you don't need? And like, they would just give me all their papers. So I'd come home with like a backpack full of papers from the school and it would just drive my mom nuts because I was always cutting them all up. And then like in the magazine aisles at the grocery store, all those cards that fall out of the magazines, I would go literally go through the whole rack every time and pick out all the cards that had fallen out of the, um, out of the, the magazines. And also like, at the at the like um hardware store you know i was a sucker for paint chips because they were paper you know and they were colored and they were pretty and anyway so yeah for a long time i've always this one says faxed i don't know if i want to use that one um anyway so yeah and then what has been my favorite craft so far well i really feel like making junk journals has been very fulfilling okay i'm not gonna lie like it's definitely it's definitely been the most rewarding and validating thing that i've ever done um and mostly because i mean pe people like my journals so that's cool you know I like that but um I mean, not everybody likes them but um but enough people like them, so I'm cool with it. And then it's also a really good way for me to bring all of these other things together, you know. And one person that I think is really, really, really good at doing that is Rosemary. Um, Rosemary Morris. If you guys, you know, have, have ever, I know you guys know who Rosemary Morris is. But if you don't, just look her up on YouTube. She's out there. She's out there lurking, but, um, yeah, she has been really inspirational as far as, you know, being artistic in and expressive, I think in her journals. So, yeah, just one person, one of many, you know, um, yeah. Okay. So I think I answered all the questions. <laughs> Yeah, I answered all the questions. So, I did pretty good. Hi, guys. So, yeah, who do I want to tag? I think I would like to tag Tracy, of Tracy, Tracy Fox. And I would also like to tag Carla. Um, so, if uh, you, if either one of you guys watch this video, which I'm, I'm hoping maybe you do at some point, um, tag your it. <laughs> and I'll... Um, I'll leave the questions. I copied the questions from, who did I get them from? From Rankin Studios, from Terry Rankin's uh, video, from one of her videos. So, um, so I'll copy the questions into this video so that you guys can, um, so you can answer them. <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to move forward on these and I'll be cutting these into just tag shapes. I have just collaged plain papers, different papers on the, but anything that I feel like you could write on it, you know, and it wouldn't be annoying. Um, I just did that on the back of this. This is one of the um, prescription pages. So yeah, so that's all I've done. And I might make some real small tags or bigger ones. Um, and then I'll show you guys kind of how I wind up um, embellishing them if I do anything. But I really don't think I'm going to do much to them, to be honest. So, okay. All right, guys. I love you. Oh, I didn't even see. I didn't even put labels on these. 
So I might actually, like after I cut these up, I might wind up um, cutting out some other labels. I printed off a whole bunch of Tracy's labels. She's got this kit on her, on her um, shop of just, you know, just plain labels, like Denison style labels. Um, these are not on her inner shop, but, but these are and different colors and stuff. They're really cool. So I love that, you know, like I printed them off, um, like two to a page so you can get real small ones or, you know, bigger ones or whatever. Anyway. So yeah, those are an in Tracy's shop. So I might actually wind up cutting some of those out instead of using up all my Denison label. <laughs> okay. I'm putting these away and I'm not using any more. <laughs> I hoard these things. Okay, guys, I love you, and I will see you in the next, uh, the next video. This was kind of fun and laid back, right? Okay, talk to you later. Bye for now. <laughs>